where she is. I'm trying to find her. Ah. Oh. Hey, Henny. Henny, it's your time. So today we're kind of going to show you a different side of home sitting. In home sitting, whenever you have animals, inevitably, at some point, you're going to have to dispatch one of them. Um, a lot of things are kind of out of your control, and that's the case with Miss Henny here. Henny has been sick for quite a while. We've done a lot to help her, and nothing's kind of helped. Unfortunately, Henny here has genetics uh, not on her side, and her issue is very much with genetics. She's a hatchery bird, and um, she just has always had issues. So Henny here has a reproductive issue. We're not quite sure what it is. So because we are an all-natural homestead in, and we try to prevent things as much as possible, we're going to go ahead and do a necrops necropsy on her, which is basically an autopsy on her um, today, and kind of figure out what happened, if it's something that we need to be worried about, which I don't think it is, or if it's just something that was inevitable for her. So we are going to take you through that process. I think it's something really important for all of you uh, to know and understand if you're trying to keep a healthy homestead and a healthy flock. Miss Henny here, uh, it's her last day, so and, it, and it's the right day. Her eyes are still, um, they dilate very weird and, and she just can't even get on her roost anymore. Her abdomen is really swollen. It's not, she's not egg bound or anything like that. It's, it's like a growth or something. So. Um, I will tell you this video is probably going to be graphic, so if you don't want to watch it, turn it off right now. Can you see how... Oh, I know. You can see her abdomen is really swollen. So I'm going to show you kind of a quick and easy way to do this. Basically, we need to figure out what was wrong with her. She's gone, she's over, she's done. She stinks to the high heavens. So we're gonna go ahead and open her up real quick. I noticed she has a really, really swollen abdomen. I'm not sure if you can see or not, but I mean, her abdomen is super swollen and liquidy. So we're gonna pull her up. We're downhill here in case something comes out. And we'll see what's going on off some of these feathers. looks like fat, too. Okay, so we're gonna... She doesn't have any meat on her, man. We're gonna open her up a little further. Let's see what all this is. So this is mostly fat. And look here, we got lungs, we've got her intestine. Let's see that. Pull this up. Make sure I'm not nicking anything. So 
here's her intestine. And it is pretty swollen. Really swollen. Super duper swollen. So my guess is gonna be this is probably an intestinal issue that turned into an infection. Her uh She's not even. See how swollen her intestines are? Everything is really swollen. So I'm going to guess. She had some kind of intestinal blockage, and, um, and clearly nothing was helping that. Her kidneys in there are really small. Her gallbladder, here's her gallbladder. Let's see if you can see it. Here's her gallbladder right here. That actually looks pretty normal. You can see her intestines still working. And they're just really inflamed. I, I believe, probably, see all this fat she's got inside? I believe that there was some kind of blockage, either due to fat being wrapped around her organs, look, or she had an egg bound. Yeah, see, that's hard. She's got a blockage in there of some sort. So, we're going to go ahead. Now we know. We know it's not contagious. There's nothing really wrong with her. This is kind of genetic, most likely. Uh, or she just ate something that didn't agree with her. So, we're going to go ahead and wash up and talk a little bit more about it. Basically, I'm certain what probably happened is there's probably two different scenarios. The first scenario is that she could have been egg bound. I didn't see any eggs inside of her at all <clears throat> after I opened up her a little more. Um, so she could have been egg bound and she could have had the egg burst inside of her which could have created an infection um, which then in turn went into her intestines and everything kind of got messed up. The second option is that um, she was just she had a lot of internal fat and so because of that it kind of got wrapped around her organs and um, could have caused a bounding issue in her intestines it's not uncommon it can happen to any kind of animal um, she had some hard bounding in her intestines so either way it caused intestinal issues so um, that's a good thing I mean it's not a good thing for her but it's a good thing for us because it, it was more um, you know, some animals just aren't genetically created to live a long time. She was a few years old. Um, you know, the older you get, the fatter you get <laughs> in some situations. But uh, she just, you know, she's never really been well. So she could have had a genetic issue for her whole life. Like I said, she's a hatchery bird, so she was never really bred to conformation. Um, no standard at hatcheries whatsoever when it comes to health and breeding and the standard of the chicken breed so it doesn't surprise me um, all of our other chickens are healthy have been for a long time um, so it was just kind of a her issue so we'll chalk it up to something we couldn't have helped uh, learning experience for us learning experience for you guys could have it could it have been prevented um, I don't know we already do so many preventative things here that I feel like 
if all the stuff we're already doing to prevent different things isn't working for her, then it had to have been genetics. Uh, could have been something she ate. Yeah, she could have ate something she wasn't supposed to eat. She would have been the only one, um, which is also not uncommon, could happen. But I don't think it's anything that we did here, so that's a good thing. That's I like opening our animals up when we uh, when we have to dispatch of them or, or they die, um, just to kind of see what happened. Was it something we did? If it was something we did, we would need to learn from it. If it was something <clears throat> uh, environmentally related, we need to learn from that and fix that issue. So we are firm believers in opening our animals up as hard as it is. It's always hard. It's never easy. Um, and seeing what's going on in there. So this is the other side of homesteading. It's what we do because uh, we have to. If we want to live as naturally as possible and keep our flock and animals safe from bacteria and disease and um, I did spare you from opening up her intestines. I did open them up. I didn't see any any bacteria or anything to make me believe that there was any bacteria in there. Doesn't, doesn't mean there wasn't. Um, I, I opened her up out in the woods because I didn't want to open her up here in the yard if it was bacteria and then the dogs get into it or the other animals get into it. <clears throat> so uh, that's the yucky side of homesteading. It happens. happens to everybody. Uh, but I hope it was kind of a learning process for you today. <clears throat> sorry if you have a weak stomach. <clears throat> Allergies. And I'm sorry if uh, you watched it and you didn't want to, but for some reason you kept watching. Uh, but it's just, it's reality. It's home setting. So I wanted to take you on that journey with us today. Um, and that's it. I've got rabbits coming up that we're processing. I've got quail coming up that we're processing. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, I've got a lot of errands to run in town, but I will get that at some point in the coming week and I'll get videos of, of that as well for those of you that are interested. That's it for me. Happy homesteading. Before you start anything, start with a good knife and a good apron because you're going to get messy. This is a Kershaw knife. I got this for Christmas one year from Mark and I have loved it. Do all my rabbits and quail and everything with this knife. So really good knife to have. 